he didn't make it. Surprise. Took him directly into surgery, but he can't just only drive over. Give this hat to his little boy. Raylan, I hope you have enough respect for my capabilities to know that I would not blow up a car that I'm standing next to. Who then? Wynn Duffy. Does that name mean anything to you? <laughs> Too much. <laughs> I heard that a cop in a hat got shot. I guess it wasn't you. No, I'm fine. I can see that. Uh, am, am I done here? I got a family member that's concerned about me. We're done. <laughs> Why hasn't you robbed the bank yet? Huh? What did he do all this time? I want you to take one of these pills in front of me. Go on. Open, huh? And lift your tongue, huh? You blew up the car, you must have been close. You see who killed the trooper? You don't want to tell me, I'll just assume it was you. What I know is I we were on our way, Mike and I were on our way to Midnight Mass. <laughs> <laughs> the pawn shop owner you sent after me. God rest his soul. Had a little <laughs> game he liked to play with his flunkies. He familiar? Uh, Holland Roulette. <laughs> Bullshit. Where's Quarles? Kiss my ass. Jesus <laughs> Christ! <laughs> there are cops outside! That's right, they're outside. You're a cop! You reached for a gun, I saw it. <laughs> Where's Quarles? I don't know! Jesus, stop it! I tried to blow him up in his car, and then I drove away. That is all I know! You don't know where he is? I don't know where he is! I believe you. Come on, pull the trigger once again, huh? For good measure. Hmm. <laughs> they are on their favorite bridge again. <laughs> Is this the same night? How is all of this happening on the same night? I got an idea you are not entirely happy with my services. Boy, why would he reach for a gun, huh? <laughs> with half a dozen armed people behind him. Want me to make that call? Not yet. Guys, I think you can lower your guns. <laughs> They've driven off. And what I'm hearing sounds like you screwed up. Excuse me? Hmm? You screwed up. You know how I know that? Because one of yours is dead. <laughs> think twice about your next move, gentlemen. Where did you get the second gun? Raylan? What the hell? <laughs> Seriously, where did he get that from? He's wearing only one holster. I don't know if I can get your quarrels. I might could get your boy crowded. I'm listening. But boy, it shouldn't be your main interest, your main focus right now. Can't believe I slept through all that. Mom, you don't sleep, you hibernate. Oh, funny. Hey, you dropped something. I get bit by a copperhead, it's on you. You are about to get bitten by a carpet beggar. <laughs> I'm guessing you got the keys, sport. That woman looks like Vic Mackey's wife on the shield. Is it her? A warrant popped. I made a couple of calls. Best I could find out, the U.S. Marshals believe you put a body in the ground some nights past. Out by Black Lick Creek. What the hell, Arlo? Did you talk? Why? I mean, he's the only one who knows. I believe we're square. Good luck. Not much point in running, I think. Just go to jail. You will meet Dickie there. Bobby Quarles. You should me. <laughs> Just when he said that, the paper opened. <laughs> I guess it wasn't my time yet. Something upstairs likes me. Ah, oh, it's a great movie. Lanny, do me a favor, go get my copy if somebody up there likes me. It should be in with the classics. See ya! <laughs> You owe me 250. I'm gonna need that paid back in full. Okay. And Sammy's gonna need something for pain and suffering. Pain and suffering? You pointed a gun in his face, Bobby. He's traumatized. 
He's seeing a therapist right now as we speak. I'll let you get things straight with your family. You come up with the money, you can come home. I will come up with the money. How? Unless Arlo has robbed the bank without us knowing, or you can find Limehouse's secret stash. I don't see much potential to get money. You can't just sit here, you gotta run. There ain't nowhere for me to go. It's not how it's supposed to happen without no warning. You can visit him in prison. I'm getting out, just don't point the gun at me, not them, okay? Pete, I'm not gonna say it again. Go! Oh, no, come on! <laughs> Pete, stop the car! Oh! It's gonna be okay, bitch. Her annoying voice was showing right there. <laughs> That's what gave her away. She is Mrs. Mackey. Raven, I wanted to say I'm sorry. Sorry for what? Now I treated you when you're a boy. <laughs> <laughs> Who's this? Uh, this is Mitch. Mr. Coral says to do exactly what I say, or he'll kill me. Okay. No, no, get in your car. Why does Carpetbagger have Raylan's cell number? If you talk to anyone or do anything stupid. If you talk to anyone or do anything stupid. I will kill you. <laughs> I won't. Don't worry. The way this works is you give up these boys, I give you my gun. How about you give me the gun and I don't kill the boys? The boys for my gun. That's cute. <laughs> Boyd Crowder, he's in jail and Quarles is on the run. Our work is done. And now we are done. You and me, you get out of Noble's Holler for dark. Why all of a sudden? Hasn't he done everything Limehouse asked of him? Calling in about devil. Boyd goddamn nearly figured out where that came from. But he didn't. Did he? Because I got lucky. I laid it off on Arlo and one of Ava's girls. The fuck? Why did he tell him? Also, did he even know where the body was buried? Didn't Boyd and Arlo do that alone? You like that? Ouch! What the hell? I'm gonna need you to get out. Now! What did I do? Would you get out of here? Mary Painter! Mm hmm. Why was that guy wearing his underwear, huh? <laughs> You told Dickie something he took back to Limehouse. No. Arlo told you something. No. You've been working with Limehouse no. himself. No, I don't know. I've been loyal. To who? If I wanted to do wrong by you, there are things I could say. No. You don't threaten me. You don't threaten me. <laughs> I pay or you kill the marshal. Yeah, well, no, first I'll kill the kid and then I will kill the marshal. <laughs> well, no offense, but not my people, not my problem. Well, then I'm going to kill you. If you do, it would be a dozen armed men out there before you can turn around. Plus, you won't get the money. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit, it's a piggy bank! <laughs> Marshal, you are one strange piece of chicken. One day, you about to tear my whole world apart over a dead trooper. Next day, you giving all this money to the man that killed him. Uh... You do realize that Carpetbagger's pointing a gun at him? You think that I killed the trooper? Who did? <laughs> uh, please give me back my arm. <laughs> it's my favorite arm. Who killed him? You're an old man. <laughs> What? Why was Arlo there? And why would he shoot that guy? Let's go. Sad. Come on. Sad, you son. You got clothes on under there? I don't know. Well, at least a shirt. <laughs> so that puts Arlo, Dickie, and Boyd in prison next season, huh? <laughs> I've connected to Arlo in ways I was never given a chance to do with my own daddy. He's not my crew, Raylan. He's my family. Oh, please. It's not believable at all. They hardly had any bonding moments this season that would justify this kind of behavior. I killed Devil. We are done here, Art. No. He was ready to take Boyd out. 
I took him out first. So you killed him. That's right. Well, and now Boyd walks through. <laughs> you know what they're saying at the office? Mm. I disarmed him. <laughs> Wouldn't that make for a nice bedtime story? Why did Art think you'd be upset? I think it was why our little shot birdie. Which was? He didn't know he's a state trooper. Just saw a man in a hat pointing a gun at Boyd. He didn't know it was a state trooper? Didn't the state trooper arrive in his state trooper vehicle? Well, and that is that. The end of probably my least favorite season so far. And the reason for that is A. Limehouse and B. Carpetbagger. Limehouse was just a boring character. Well, he probably still is a boring character. I imagine he will return in season 4. But that guy spent 90% of the entire season at his little pig farm giving speeches and doing some scheming off screen and that was it. I never got behind that guy. And as for Carpetbagger, that character actually started off as interesting with a lot of potential, but then in the second half of the season they just turned him into this, I don't even know what to call it, pretty much a pathetic loser. It was pretty much like a smart addict version of Dickie. Making plans all the time, but also failing all the time. And that makes for a poor villain. He tried to pin Gary's murder on Raylan and failed. He tried to build up this drug thing in that house, whatever that was exactly, and failed, shut down by Raylan. He tried to buy the sheriff, helping him win the election, failed, shut down by Boyd. And then in the end he was just after money and failed multiple times with that too. That guy started off as so threatening, but then in the end just became a joke. You just couldn't take that guy seriously at some point because he just kept failing. It should be the other way around. The villain should win most of the time. So his inevitable demise actually comes off as an accomplishment. You know the hero should actually work his ass off to get the upper hand. But I never really got that feeling that Raylan or even Boyd had to do much to get the upper hand. They pretty much owned him for at least the past four episodes. And that's pretty much why I didn't like this overarching story this season. Because there was just too much focus on a boring character and a, well not poorly developed character, but a character that was developed in the wrong direction. 